things. So if they join a few minutes late, uh, they should still be fine. But anyway, uh, hello everyone. Welcome to an intro to JavaScript. So here in this workshop, we're going to be learning the basics of programming with art and drawing. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, and this workshop is presented to you by the S3 STEM Club from Westview High School. So we're all students uh, from Westview, and we're really, really excited to be able to teach you programming uh, virtually here today. Um, it's going to be great, and uh, yeah, I'm so excited. So before we start, I just wanted to get it into a few norms. So uh, for those of you who weren't here when I explained a few things, uh, one, please remain muted for the entire duration of today's workshop. Uh, the reason behind this is we have over 50 people in the uh, call right now. And if people start unmuting, it's going to get really hectic. So if you do unmute yourself, we will manually mute you. Uh, if you have any questions, those should go in the chat box. Uh, please stay appropriate. Um, that's just, you know, that, that should be obvious. And if you uh, are... If you do not follow these rules, uh, you might be removed from the call. So uh, just an FYI. Um, and yeah, uh, this is going to be an intro to JavaScript. And let's get started. So um, Aditya, do you want to get into the workshop agenda? Yes, sure. So firstly, Rishabh started off by introducing what uh, our agenda is here today. So we start off with our introduction where we talk about ourselves for just a few seconds. We introduce ourselves so you know who we are. Then we move on to speaking about programming in general. We tell you what programming is, how it applies to concepts in today's world, and how it can help you do many things in the future. We also talk about JavaScript in specific, which is the language we will be using to teach you guys programming today. We follow that up with a demonstration where we show you uh, two cool things that you could do with programming. Obviously, they're quite advanced, but you will be able to see how programming actually works in real life. After that, we teach you uh, a few different activities. We teach you how to draw some shapes. And with those, you will be able to make a snowman, and you will be able to make some uh, changes to it as well. Finally, we fill, uh, finish with some coloring basics where we teach you how to fill in the color on objects and we also teach you how to color the background in. After that, we open the floor for questions. So if you have anything to ask us about, then you can do that then. Okay, thanks Aditya. So like he mentioned, first we're just gonna introduce ourselves briefly. Uh, so as I mentioned, we're all students from Westview High School um, and we have a club called the S3 STEM Club. Uh, we have an organization called the Samyak Science Society, and this is the Oregon chapter of that organization. So we work directly um, with, with kids mainly in Oregon, but we know some of you uh, may be here across the world. So it's just really exciting uh, to be able to teach you this. Um, first, we're just going to introduce ourselves briefly. So uh, me, hi, everyone. My name is Rishabh Jain. I'm a sophomore at Westview High School, and I've been uh, coding since a pretty young age. I have a lot of experience in JavaScript. Um, I have experience in Python. I have experience in a variety of other languages, including uh, HTML, CSS, Octave, uh, and a few others. So I'm really excited. Uh, Ditya, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm Aditya Chatterjee. Like Rishabh, I'm also a sophomore at Westview High School. Uh, however, I did not start co uh, coding at a very early age. I wish I would have, as it would have helped me a lot. I have a fair bit of experience in Python, not quite so much in JavaScript, and a decent bit of experience in HTML and CSS. Uh, my name is Tamid, and like the other two, I am a sophomore at Westview High School. And much like Aditya, I regrettably um, didn't start coding at that young of an age. And I'm uh, experienced in Python, JavaScript, and web design. Yeah, hi, I'm Rot. I'm also a sophomore at Westview High School. And I also didn't really start coding at a very young age. I started around like eighth grade. And I started with Python as a, a beginner, like coding to learn it. And then I have, I have experience in Python, JavaScript, and um, some other languages too. Okay, thanks everyone. So now we're going to get into what is programming. Okay, so what do you guys think is programming? Like just to give like some background info so you know what you guys know, like why don't you guys answer in the chat? What do you guys think when you hear the term programming 
and if you want to enter in the chat just in the very top right there should be a a button to click chat and just and just enter a response in the chat to what do you think when you hear the term programming okay so I'm seeing like a lot of you guys have been saying coding and some other people think that it's instructing a computer to what to do and how so yeah, basically. Uh, so many of you thing. were right. Yeah. Many of you were right. So basically, programming is the process of uh, instructing mm -hmm. a computer uh, what to do. So much how you and I speak English or Spanish or many other languages, computers can speak a multitude of languages, and we can tell computers what to do and how to solve problems. Like if I can tell uh, a computer, I can program a computer to like draw a circle or draw a rectangle yeah and there's many different programming languages on how you can give the computer instructions like for example javascript it's used in minecraft and everything if you play like in a game everything there it's used as a programming like how you're on the computer right now and in the zoom call it's being used by a certain programming language so that it allows you to be into the zoom call and that's some of the stuff that we will be teaching in the future so that you can understand how how all this programming can w go into te our technology that we have. Um, I have a question. Yes. Um, do they use it in uh, um almost every game? Yeah. Yeah. They everything. Do. Everything. Every single tech piece of technology is using some sort of coding to, that it tells yeah. you that allows you to be able to use that technology because without coding no technology would be able to exist. Yeah, programming is really cool. Programming is what makes up all of the technology that we use today. Like you might be familiar with the site YouTube, or you might have seen a phone, an Xbox, or a Nintendo Switch. All of these things are the things that use coding and programming. So uh, programming is really cool because if you get into programming, you t yourself can make cool websites and games, and you can pretty much do whatever you want with it. OK, everyone, so we're now going to get into our very first demo. OK, so this is going to be just a quick demo where we show you around the editor for what we're going to be using today to code. Uh, some of you may be familiar with this editor. It's called uh, Con.js. So Con.js is a modified version of JavaScript that has some cool built-in functions that allow you to uh, make shapes uh, and do just a, a whole variety of things. And people have expanded on this and made some pretty cool stuff. So uh, right now, we're going to quickly just demo you. Uh, we're going to demo a quick um, little snippet um, about a game called Minecraft. Uh, and I see some of you are mentioning that in the chat. Uh, so Minecraft was originally made in Java, but they actually took this game and they remade it in JavaScript. So today we're actually going to be learning about JavaScript. Uh, so as you can see, this web page is loading up. Uh, this is on a website called Khan Academy. I'm sure many of you have heard of it before. Um, and, and Khan Academy has a, a lot of cool functions, as I mentioned, which we're going to be learning about in, today. So this is a really, really long, complicated program um, that's able to do a lot of cool things. It has animations. It has player interaction uh, and a lot more. You can use programming for animations. You can use it for a whole variety of things. So on this left side right here is the actual where the lines of code will be. So as you can see on this left side, it counts down. Um, and these are literally just the lines of code. So on line three, we have this comment right here. On line 25, we have another comment. So it keeps going down. On the right side here is what's actually being displayed. So this is the code running in action on this right side. So as you can see here, it's taking my player input. It's doing a variety of cool things. Um, and, and it's pretty nice. Over here below this uh, little editor, there's a restart button. So this restart button allows you to restart the program that you're running. Um, so only click on that if you need to actually restart it. There's also a spin off button, but we're not going to be getting into that. Um, on the top right, there's a login. 
Again, uh, you're not required to log in for today's workshop or the future workshops that we're hosting, but you can if you already have an account on Connie. So now we're getting to something that you guys will get to do. So I'm gonna go back here um, and get into our second demo. So for this second demo, you'll actually get to play around and experiment on your own. So we're gonna give you five minutes to uh, learn about how this Khan Academy website works and how you can code on it. So uh, Murat, do you wanna put the link in the chat? Yeah, sure. Okay, okay yeah, uh, so I, I actually posted it, Murat posted it. So check the chat window, um, head to that link, um, and this will take you to this game called Doodle Jump. Of course, there's so many different things we can do with programming that aren't just game related, but games are really interesting because they take player input and we get to interact with them directly. So head over to that link, uh, play around, see what you can do. You don't have to do any coding yet, just get yourself familiar with the layout. Uh, we'll meet back here in five minutes. Don't leave the call. Just open this in a new browser window. In the device that I'm using, um, uh, it's blocked the site. So what should I do? Uh, as we said, please don't unmute during the call. Uh, please only enter questions in the chat. I'm going to mute you um, because please follow the rules that we have given. Um, if you have a question, you can enter it in the chat. If the Khan Academy is blocked on your device, uh, then please try to get a different device because uh, it shouldn't be blocked on most school devices since it is educational. Okay, everyone, we're going to give you one more minute. This is your one minute uh, warning. For the workshop, please, or for the demo, please go to the link we sent in the chat. Do not go to Khan Academy. Just go to the link we sent. Again, you do not need to log in. Just please follow the instructions to go to the link that was sent in the chat. I'll send it one more time. And if you're not able to figure out how the game is working, that is OK, uh, because this is a more advanced concept. Uh, the main point was just to get yourself familiar with the layout. As long as you were able to you know, get to the page, uh, scroll up and down um, on the code, maybe press the Restart button, you're OK.
All right, everyone, please uh, close the, uh, the Doodle Jump tab and come back to this Google Meet, this uh, where we're presenting right now, so that we can move on. So the demo is now done, and we are moving on with the rest of the workshop. OK, so Aditya is now going to tell us about our very first function. OK, so today our first functions will be the ellipse and rectangle function. Uh, so the difference, if you don't know, between an ellipse and or a circle and an ellipse is that an ellipse is essentially a circle, but it's not necessarily completely perfect, perfectly circular. As you can see, Rishabh just revealed. So on the left, you have the circle. And on the right, you have an ellipse. So the ellipse is almost like a horizontally stretched version of the circle. It can even be vertically stretched. So to draw an ellipse, we will be using the ellipse function. The ellipse function uh, is essentially you just write ellipse, and then you have a parentheses, and then you end that statement with a, with a semicolon. The semicolon is to tell the computer that you are done writing on that line of code. The ellipse function takes four parameters. They are the x, y, w, and h. So the x parameter tells the computer how far to the right or to the left you want the ellipse. So if you increase the x parameter, the value there, the ellipse will shift farther to the right. And next, we have the y parameter. The y parameter tells you how far, how far up or down you want the ellipse. So if you increase the y parameter, the ellipse actually goes farther down. And if you decrease it, the ellipse goes up. Uh, then after that, we have the w parameter. The W parameter tells the computer how wide the ellipse will be. So if you increase the W parameter, the ellipse will get wider and wider. Then finally, we have the height parameter. The height parameter just tells the computer how tall the ellipse will be on a vertical axis. So to summarize, we, have, we, we can tell the computer four things about the ellipse. We can tell the computer its horizontal position, its vertical position, and the two parameters on the ellipse's shape. Uh, the rectangle function is much the same. If this was a little con confusing, Rishabh will demo it for you on the coding platform itself, so it'll certainly be clear then. All right, everyone. So now we're going to uh, try experimenting with the ellipse. So for now, please just uh, watch my screen so you can understand how it works. But you'll get to try this out in in our challenges in just a little bit. So make sure you're watching this so you properly understand how it works. So to draw an ellipse, the first thing we're going to do is type in ellipse. Then we're going to do an open parentheses. So now the open parentheses signifies that we're going to prov provide some parameters. What are parameters? Well, parameters are basically the values that we are giving the function. So the values we can give are the width. So the first value is the width. Or, sorry, not width. I mean the x coordinate. So the first value is the x coordinate. The second value is the y coordinate. The third value is the width. And the fourth value is the height. So for now, I'm just putting in random values of 50, 50, 50, 50. And as you can see, it generated this circle right here. You notice this thing right here that I put? It's called a semicolon. A semicolon essentially says that we are terminating this line. It means that this line is now over. If we try, if we don't put a semicolon, you'll see that it gives us this error that it looks like you're missing a semicolon. So make sure you put in the semicolon so that the computer understands that this is the end of the line and it doesn't keep reading. Over here for the height, now we can try modifying it. Let's try making the height 100. As you can see, it got stretched. Let's try moving it over to the 100 uh, point. It moved down. So one cool thing about this editor is if you double click on any of the numbers, so I'm going to click once on this 50. If you double click on it, it will give you the slider. So let's go to the slider. And as you can see, we can slide it left and right. And it will automatically change the value as we move it. I'm going to slide this. Wow. So as you can see, this is really powerful. We can make it bigger. We can make it smaller. We can stretch it. We can do all sorts of cool things using the ellipse function. Let's try the rectangle function. 
Rectangle um, is short for rect, R-E-C-T. This one will create the rectangle. Again, we're going to specify the x and y coordinate. So if I put in 50 by 50, it will go 50 pixels to the right. Pixels are just a small unit on the screen. So we're going to go 50 to the right, and then we're going to go 50 down. So the rectangle should appear somewhere around here. Now we're going to specify the width and height. So I'm going to do 10 by 10. Make sure you put the semicolon. And as you can see, the rectangle appeared. I want a bigger rectangle. As you can see, I was able to make it a lot longer. Now we can even move it up and down and left and right. Remember, the x coordinate is what controls the movement left and right. What do you guys think the y coordinate does? Can you write your response in the chat? If the x moves it left and right, what do you think the y does? Yeah, you guys are right. It's up and down. The y will help us move vertically up and down. So that's it for the ellipse and rectangle function. Let's go back and let's try some things out. Our first challenge. OK, so this is the simple snowman challenge. In this challenge, what you'll be doing is essentially you'll be drawing a snowman. And this can be done using the ellipse command that we've learned so far. And with the ellipse command to do this, you will be drawing three circles, one each on top of the other. So you have the biggest circle on the bottom. You have a slightly smaller circle up above that. And then you have the smallest circle, which is the snowman's head at the very top. Remember that these circles are sitting on top of each other. So there's a certain way to orient the code so that the circles actually go on top and not behind. And Richard will show you this in a quick second. OK, everyone, so for this challenge, if you are a little bit more experienced in coding, you might be able to get it straight away. But if you're new to this, that's totally fine, because we're going to walk you step by step. So if you are a little bit more advanced, I'm going to send the link in the chat. Everyone, uh, everyone, not just people who are advanced, go to this link. Uh, so everyone who, who can see this, uh, please go to the chat window and press the link. This will take you to our first challenge. So I'm going to go to this link that was sent in the chat. And as you can see, it's going to load up. So this challenge is called the simple snowman. And we're going to be drawing a snowman. So now here's the part where if you already know what you're doing, you, you can feel free to try things out on your own. But if you need a little bit of guidance or if you want a little bit of support, we're here for you. So for this challenge, first we're going to start by drawing a circle. The instructions say that we want to start off by making a circle for the bottom of the snowman with an ellipse command. And as you can see, it gives us a hint. So let's try this coordinate. 200 by 300 by 150 by 150. As you can see, we got the bottom of the snowman. I'm going to give you a few seconds to try do that on to try to do that on your own. When you see this hopper that says "Good job, ready for more," pause and come back. OK, uh, hopefully by now everyone has opened the link that was sent in the chat. And hopefully you've either completed making the circle or are getting close. So I'll give you a few more seconds. Try to make the circle. Um, and remember, these are the inputs that we'll give. We'll give the x value of 200, so it goes right in the middle. We'll give a y value of 300, so it goes a little bit past the middle to the down portion right here. And we're going to give it a width of 150 and a height of 150 so that it's a perfect circle. 
150 by 150. Okay, everyone, let's get into the next circles. So if you think you know what you're doing, feel free to go ahead and uh, try to make the bottom or the middle and top circle. So I'm gonna do this uh, and you can feel free to watch along. So over here, I'm gonna make the ellipse function once more because I wanna make another circle on top of this. This is gonna be our middle circle, so it's gonna be slightly smaller. So I'm gonna use the same X value of 200 so that it goes right in the middle and I want it to be slightly above. So I'm going to try using 200 instead. Next, I'm going to do 150 by 150. And let's see what happens. This is pretty good. But the problem that I see here is that it's the same size as the bottom circle. And we want this one to be slightly smaller so that we can actually stack it on top. So I'm going to try making this one 100 by 100. Hopefully you guys were able to. Uh, so, uh, hopefully you were able to see how I did that. If it made sense, uh, that's great. Try to do that on your own to make the second circle. Okay, and finally, once we have the second circle, we're going to move on to the third circle. Uh, if you can't see it. Please, like, I'm sharing my screen on the Google Meet, which is where we're doing this conference. So you should be able to see my screen if you come back to the Google Meet page. I see some of you are saying it's too small. I will try to make it slightly bigger. Hopefully that's a little bit better. OK, everyone, now we're going to make our third and final circle, which is going to be on top. If you're already done making the entire snowman, great job. Uh, that means you're doing an awesome job. But if you're not, that's totally fine, because this is just our first challenge. We're just getting started. So if you are already done, I challenge you to try making eyes on the snowman. So that will require you make, to make really small circles. But let's make the final circle together. I'm going to do one last ellipse. And I'm going to make it right in the middle at 200. And I'm going to move it up another 100 pixels to 100. And for our width and height, I'm going to do 75 by 75. Let's see how that turns out. Mm -hmm. It was OK. It looks like it's the right size, but it's kind of missing the point. It needs to be on top of this second circle. So rather than trying to change this value a lot, if I change this too much, it's just going to go away. I'm going to use the slider. To, to, so to use the slider, I'm just going to click on this once, and I'm going to drag this all the way down so it's on top. OK, everyone, so as you can see, we've completed the challenge. We have our snowman. This is really cool. So I'm going to give you one minute to try to make this. Um, and once you're there, we're going to move on. OK, hopefully you were able to finish the challenge. 
If you weren't, you can finish it after this workshop is over. So once at the very end, once we're done, uh, you can try finishing it. But hopefully, the I think the majority of you will be either finished or very close to finishing. So good job, everyone. So let's come back to the Google Meet. You can close that tab if needed. And let's get into the next part of the workshop. OK, so next up, we have the line function. And the line function tells the computer to just draw a line, like you would think it would do. So the line function actually follows a similar syntax as the ellipse function in that you enter line, and then you put the parentheses, and you have it ended with a semicolon, as always. So the line function has slightly different parameters, however. You have to give it the first point and the second point, and then the computer connects the dots for, dots for you. Here's how you give it the first point. So the first two parameters are the y and x coordinates of the first point. So the x coordinate of the first point, x1, is essentially telling the computer how far to the right or to the left you want the line to start. The y1 coordinate is telling the computer how far up or down you want the line to start. The x2 coordinate is telling the computer how far you want the line uh, in a horizontal axis, to, so to the right or to the left, to end. And the y2 coordinate tells the computer how far up or down you want the line to end. And again, as with the ellipse function, Richard will demo, demo this on the coding platform itself for you so that you can see how this is done. OK, everyone, so I'm on this blank notepad. Uh, please just watch. The line function is slightly harder so than the ellipse. So make sure you're watching carefully so you understand it. So to make the line, we're going to type in line. Then after that, we're going to use an open parentheses. So remember, this will tell us that we're going to put some parameters in. So let's put some parameters. What should we do? I'm just going to try putting in 1, 1, uh, let's try 100, 100. Whoa. So as you can see, there's just this really weird line that popped up. It's cool, but I kind of want it to be in the middle. So how can I do this? Well, we can use the slider feature. So remember, all you have to do is click on one of these numbers and then slide. Whoa. That's actually pretty cool. So it's moving the line as we just slide it. So this makes it really easy for us to experiment. So as you can see, this is our first point. This point over here is x1, x2. So this is our first x. So we're just moving that around, x, y. And then we have our other two points. So this 100 by 100 is right here. So let's try moving it. I want the line. I'm going to want this line to be this point. So this is point 0.1, and this is point 0.2, so, or point 0.2 and point 0.1. So I'm going to move point 0.2 up here. So let's try doing that. I'm going to move it to the middle, and then I want it to go up. OK, so if I wanted this point to go up, should I increase or decrease this second y value? If I want it to go up, should I decrease it or increase it? Post your answer in the chat. Oh, wow. So it looks like a lot of people are saying increase. But the answer is actually decrease. So remember that the y value, the closer it is to 0, when it's at 0, the y value is all the way up here. When it's all the way up to 400, it'll be all the way down here. So since I wanted to make it go up, I'll decrease it all the way here. So it is decrease. So that's the line function. So let's get into our second challenge, the waving snowman. OK, so this is the waving snowman challenge. And here we draw a snowman very similar to the first one. 
except this snowman will have a ground to stand on so it won't just be floating in midair and it'll also have arms which we will draw uh as with some of the stuff we have taught you today so Richard will show you what this snowman looks like okay everyone so as you can see this snowman will have three circles which we already made all we have to do is add two lines and this rectangle at the bottom so let's figure out how to do that i'm going to post a link in the chat please go to that link i posted it three times so just click on it once and you should be good so let's open up that challenge the link is in the chat head to that link and you should see something that looks kind of like this where you already had the three circles drawn So I'll give you 30 seconds to get to the link. OK, everyone. So hopefully you're at the link now. So let's get into uh, this challenge. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a rectangle so the snowman isn't just floating in midair. So if we wanted to create the rectangle and we wanted the snowman on top of the rectangle, should we put the rectangle up here on line five or should we put the rectangle here on line, or I mean, should we put the rectangle up here on line one or should we put the rectangle down here on line five? if we want the snowman to be on top of the rectangle. So the answer is actually line one. The reason why is because imagine it like this. The computer is first gonna do what, we're, what we told it to do on line one. So on line one, we're gonna tell it to draw a rectangle. Then after that, it will draw on top of the rectangle. So let's, let's try making the rectangle. I'm going to do random values. And as you can see, the rectangle is really small. It's just a square up here in the left corner. So first, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. There we go. That's a little bit better. But what we want to do is we want it to make it so that the snowman is standing on top of it. So let's try moving it down. To move it down, we're going to use the Y coordinate because the y coordinate controls going up and down so i'm going to move it down ah like that so the rectangle is now here i'm going to move it slightly left okay so now we have a rectangle down here but we want the snowman to stand on it so to stand on it i'm not going to increase the height because that will just make it taller but rather i'm going to increase this third value the width because the width will help make it longer. So let's try doing that. And as you can see, we passed on to the next step. Okay, everyone. So now here is where we're going to split off. If you still need some help, I'm going to be demoing it here on how you can make the lines. If you wanna try it on your own, try making the lines. Uh, hopefully you've followed along and made the rectangle here. But I'm going to try making the lines. Uh, you can try it by yourself as well. OK, so for the lines, we want it to be on top. Uh, as you can see, this is the final product. And we want the lines to be on top of the snowman. So that means we're going to do it at the very end so that it goes on top. So the hint tells us that one of the points is going to be at 160, 200. That point's going to be right about over here on the snowman's uh, chest. Now we want the second point to be somewhere up here. So it extends from, or I mean, sorry, this point that they gave, 160, 200, is over here. So now we want the second point to be on the chest of the snowman. So to do that, I'm just going to type in some random values once again. And it looks like we got kind of lucky. We were able to, to do that. So uh, let's try moving around the second point 
that was up here. This is the second point to make the first arm. Next, we're going to make the second arm. To do this, I'm going to follow their value once again. And then let's try some random value, 50, 50. This worked, but the snowman is, it looks like it's doing something weird. It's like dabbing or something, as you can see. So the snowman, we want the, the other hand to kind of look like this, where it's just saying, yay. So to do that, we're going to move our other point, it's the second point, uh, so that it's a little bit closer to what we want, like that. Uh, to that. So you can play around with this and make it however you want. We're going to give you three minutes to try playing around. And I'm going to write a challenge on the screen. If you're already finished with all, all of this, making the lines, uh, you can follow this challenge. Also, if you're still watching my screen, one of the things you might note is that I use this two slashes right here. Uh, so this, these two slashes actually make a comment. So anything that's in this line with the two slashes, it's a comment, meaning that the computer can't read this. It will just skip past it. But us humans, when we're reviewing our code, we can look at those. So I'm going to go arms, body. OK, everyone, one more minute. Try to, to get the arms done so you're done with the challenge. Um, I put some buttons as an extra, so um, you don't need to add the buttons. That was just a challenge. I also copy-pasted the code into the chat. So if you didn't catch anything or you're having some technical difficulties, uh, you can also just copy the code that I put in the chat and try running that. OK, 10 seconds left. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we are done. Let's come back and move on to the next part of the workshop. Tamid, go ahead. OK, so now we're going to learn how to use the fill and background functions. So far, we've learned how to make a bunch of cool shapes. And we can do a lot of things with these shapes. We even made a snowman and gave it some arms. But there is one thing that our snowman is missing, and that's color. So before we go into these commands, uh, let's start with defining what a pixel is. Your screen is made out of hundreds of thousands or even millions of pixels. And what a pixel is, it's a, a spot of light that's created from three colors. These colors are red, green, and blue. Using red, green, and blue together, you can make virtually any color. 
So with the picture on the left, what, what color do you guys think comes if you mix red and blue? Can you say it in the chat? Yeah, I'm seeing a a lot of you guys saying purple, and that's correct. If you mix red and blue, you get purple. And for another question, uh, what two colors do you think I have to mix if I want to make yellow? Yep, nice job, guys. To make yellow, you mix red and green. And so now I'm going to go into the fill command. So what the fill command does is that it can basically fill any shape that you want. Like those ellipses or rectangles that we made earlier, if we put a fill command before them, then you can pretty much fill the, the box with whatever color you want. And the background, it uh, basically paints your whole canvas one color. And the RGB values uh, that are it, parameters for both of these commands, you actually don't need to know the RGB because Con.js, it allows you to use a slider to select what color you want to make. Wow, that was really interesting and I love color. So let's try, I'm gonna try demoing um, an example of how we can use color in our picture. So first I'm gonna just try changing the background. What color do you guys want me to make the background? Put it in the chat. Pick your favorite color. Okay, I saw somebody say gold. Let's try making it gold. That sounds interesting. So I'm gonna type in background. So that's a background function. And you'll notice as soon as we do this open parentheses and close parentheses, Con.js will automatically put the slider and it will change it to red. So I want gold. Gold is about this color. So this is the slider. We can make it any color we want, which is really cool. So I'm going to make it a gold color. So that's how you can make the background. Now let's try adding a shape. Quickly add an ellipse. And we have a circle over here. But what if we want to color in this ellipse, but keep the background another color? Well, we're going to use the fill command, our fill function that Tamid just taught us. So the fill command allows us to fill in the shape or shapes that's right before the fill command that we put in. So I'm gonna put in fill and I'm gonna say, let's put in uh, this blue color, light blue. And as you can see, it filled in this ellipse. Now look what happens if I move the fill command, if I delete it and I put it after the ellipse, nothing happens. This is because the fill command only changes what's below it. So if I add another ellipse and I change this to uh, 400 by uh, 400 by 150, or 50 by 50. Uh, as you can see, it made an ellipse and it only colored this one. Now, if we move the fill function above both of these ellipses, it will color both of them blue. Now, finally, we have the background. So, so far, we've just been using the background at the very beginning to paint everything. But what if we wanted, let's just try moving the background over here. I wonder what will happen. As you can see, the background will just fill in everything uh, that's above it. So generally, we're going to put the background as the very first line of code. So it comes before any of the ellipses. But if we move it all the way here, it will just cover everything. So it's just going to fill up the entire screen. That's the basics of how we're going to use the fill command and the background command. Let's get into our next challenge. This is going to be our final challenge of today. OK, uh, so far we've created a snowman and we gave him uh, some arms and a place to stand. But our snowman is still missing color. So now that we know how to draw shapes and add color, let's add some color to our snowman and make it a nice sunny snow day. Okay, everyone, so uh, we're, 
we have 10 minutes left, so uh, don't just leave just yet because we still have one last challenge. So everyone, let's work together and solve this last challenge. I posted the link for the challenge in the chat. Please open it up, and we will start with the challenge. I posted the link in the chat. So check it out. Let's get into this challenge. And of course, you can work on these after the workshop. Yes, of course. OK, everyone. So as you can see, um, we've been given our background, or we've been given the block uh, that the snowman will be standing on. We've also been given the sun. But now we need to color it in, because this random circle here, I don't think many people will be immediately be able to tell what that is. So let's first color in the background. Now here's where the challenge starts. Now that you guys are getting very familiar with how this whole thing works, you can try this on your own. But as always, for those that are uh, th those that need a little bit of guidance, I'm going to be helping you right here. So I challenge everyone, regardless of your experience, even if you're just starting out, maybe try the background uh, using the background function that we just talked about. If you're struggling, feel free to come back here, and I will help you. Okay, so for those of you that are working on the challenge, uh, keep working. I'm just going to talk here in the background. So as you can see, uh, I use the background command, and I put it at the very top because we learned if we put it at the very end, it's just going to cover the entire thing. So I put it at the very top, um, and it covered the background, and I selected a nice blue sky. Next step, let's color the ground green. So. What function should we use to color the ground? Hmm. I think we should use the fill function because the fill will allow us to color certain shapes. So let's type in the word fill, open parentheses, and it will finish this up. Let's try using green so that the ground is green. Oh no, wait, what happened? The sun and the snowman turned green as well. Uh, now we're going to have to color those. So the thing about the fill function, is it's going to fill everything that's below it. So just keep that in mind. Next step. Now we need to make the sun yellow. So I'm going to add another fill function. I'm going to color the sun yellow. Now our last step. We need to color the snowman white. So I'm going to post this code in the chat if you uh, need help with it. And I, uh, and for the rest of you that have been following along, try making the snowman white using the fill functions. I see that a couple of you are already done, so I'm going to post a challenge uh, using this comment feature on the screen right here. Oh, I see some people are saying that it won't let you copy or paste code in. Uh, yeah, so you'll have to type it in then. Uh, but the only, remember, the only things you need to type in for this one are the background, the fill, and that's it. So we filled. We used the background function to color it blue. We filled in the ground. We filled in the sun. And now we just have to fill in the snowman. Yeah.
Okay, everyone, uh, we have one minute left. So, or you have one minute left to complete the challenge. So please uh, finish up. And the reason why the snowman isn't melting is because the temperature is still 30 degrees. So even though it's sunny, it's still really cold, so it's not melting. <laughs> Okay, everyone, so we hope you finished that challenge or uh, learned a lot by doing that one. Uh, so I'm posting one link to one last challenge. So even though we're going to be done here with the workshop in two minutes, if you want to keep going after this on your own, I've sent a link for, the, uh, for one more challenge. So, um, um... so this one is... What's for dinner? Yeah, to me to explain it. So this is the what's for dinner challenge. So now that you've learned how to create shapes and to color, uh, try to make yourself a dinner plate full of food. You can make a lot of anything you want. You can make like uh, a plate of food like pizza or you can make chicken. And so you can also click on the documentation tab to review old code if you've forgotten anything or to um, look at new things if you want to challenge yourself or learn more. All right, everyone, so we have one minute left um, for the code. We sent one last link for the what's for dinner challenge. So if you're looking for uh, a little bit more, make sure to check that out. Next weekend, next Sunday, we're going to have another workshop um, and we're gonna be moving on. So we're gonna learn about text or we're gonna, to me, what are we gonna learn about next week? Uh, next week, we're going to be learning about functions, I mean, uh, variables and animation basics. Yeah, so we're going to learn about animation. It's going to be a really, really fun workshop. Um, so that's that's going to be great. Uh, remember, if you want to try out the challenge, I'm going to send the link in the chat one last time. Um, and if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. I'm going to answer them now. Uh, someone asked for the code again. If you're having trouble with the code or need to see it, just go back to the link um, and you should be able to, it'll give you, it has the hints in the top right. So hopefully you'll, you'll be able to figure it out. Uh, for the empty sheet, um, you should be able to, if you go to Khan Academy, um, you should be able to create a new program or you can delete the entire code and try doing that. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Um, and the workshop is going to end in the next minute. So any last questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Otherwise, we will see you next week. So please tell your parents to, uh, we're going to send an email in the next few days with information about next week. Um, and we will include all of the links and all of the challenges that we did today in an email. Uh, and that will be sent soon. Uh, to the emails that you registered with. So bye, everyone. We'll see you next week. The bye. workshop will probably be next day. So we'll send an email very, very soon with all the information. Bye. 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 Bye.